Stop calling it a prop gun. It was not a prop gun. It was a real gun. Let's talk about this. By now, most of you have probably heard the tragic news a few days ago on the set of Rust, a Western starring Alec Baldwin, who's also co-producing this film. A woman, a cinematographer, mother, wife, was tragically killed in an incident involving a firearm on set. Now, I say firearm. It's not a prop. A prop gun is a piece of rubber or injection molded plastic that is manufactured to look like a real gun. But it is, for all intents and purposes, little more than a paperweight. It has no function, has no moving parts. Ammunition, live or otherwise, cannot be loaded into it. A trigger cannot be pulled. A hammer does not strike any primer on a cartridge because a cartridge can't be loaded into it. It is a hunk of plastic or rubber. Those type of prop guns are used on set when a gun needs to be thrown or tossed or hit the floor. Or in the case you think of movies like Rush Hour with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker where they... Uh, Various martial arts styles are disarming each other in fight scenes where guns are kicked or punched or launched across the set. Very effective. They look great. They add in sound effects later to make that piece of plastic or rubber sound like a real weapon when it strikes the floor. But of course, a prop master, or in this case, an armorer who works on the set of Hollywood productions would never allow a real weapon to be used in such a manner, not only for a safety issue and just a general treatment of gun safety and respect for firearms, but also what's the point of damaging a $1,000 piece of equipment when a $10 piece of plastic will do just fine to serve the purpose. In the case that we have here, when a firearm or a weapon or something needs to be used on set that actually will function, that will fire a round, be it a live round or be it a blank, it is not a prop, not a toy. It's not a hunk of plastic or a piece of rubber. It is a real gun. Now, for those of you who don't know or maybe seeing this channel for the first time or have been watching me for the past nine months or so I've been on YouTube, kind of gotten famous for this thing, right? The old Sig hat. And for those of you that don't know, and many of you have already seen it and said, hey, I love that hat. Appreciate that. Sig is short for Sig Sauer. Sig Sauer is an, is an American firearms manufacturer, uh, one of my favorites. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a gun guy, like a, lot of, like a lot of folks out there in this country. And um, I have grown up around firearms all my life. Grown up around gun safety all my life. I have three children. They have been taught gun safety. They have used firearms in safe manners to learn how to use them to respect what they are, to respect human life, um, and to respect the safety of the people around them when they are using those firearms in a safe, responsible manner. Hollywood studios and Hollywood sets, um, the people, the armorers in charge of these weapons on sets are also gun people. They've grown up around them. They work with them professionally. They tend to, or almost always, I'm sure, observe the utmost uh, safety regulations, training and respect for what's going on. Unfortunately, sometimes the rest of the crew, the actors, might not always give it the same care. We don't know what happened in this situation yet. We don't know for sure. We have bits and pieces of information. We have some things that we could probably say fairly definitively like, this is not a prop gun. We need to stop using this term. Um, but we have some other things that we're guessing whether or not it was live ammunition or a blank. Um, blanks can, um, as uh, you know, people have this conception that blanks are perfectly safe. They are not perfectly safe. They are certainly not as deadly as a live round of ammunition but they can be just as fatal in the wrong circumstance if that weapon is handled incorrectly. So I wanted to take some time today. Obviously, this is not my normal style of video, but since this is this falls under the category of Hollywood entertainment news, 
this is sort of the stuff we discuss. So I'm going to take this opportunity to help people understand what we're talking about, why I don't like this term prop gun being used. The media across the board is guilty of it. Um, and it probably stems from an attitude in Hollywood that, you know, it, at least when you use the word prop gun like this, it's it's it suggests to me that there's an attitude out there that uh, the same kind of safety precautions, you know, just don't apply. And it creates an atmosphere, it creates an environment where people are are not going to take or less likely to take the same kind of safety precautions if we keep thinking this thinking of this as a stage gun or a prop gun or something other than what it is, which is a firearm. It is a deadly weapon that needs to be treated with the utmost respect and care. And we're talking about blanks, talking about live ammunition. You know, a blank works the same as a, a, a regular round. The process is no different. The end result is what is different. So this is a Sig Sauer P229. Okay. Sig Sauer P229. This is a, a real gun. This is as real a weapon as what was used on set by, in this case, Mr. Baldwin, uh, who was, I believe, using a revolver. I don't know exactly what sort, but you know, figure this is an old Western movie. Could have been something like a Peacemaker, 44 Magnum, 45 caliber, 30, who knows, okay? But some sort of revolver. But the mechanics of it are a little different when it comes to how that cartridge operates, again, whether a blank or a live round of ammunition. It is a firearm. This is a weapon to be treated with respect. The person in charge of these would be in charge of loading and unloading and care and storage of these weapons that should be handed directly, to my understanding, on a Hollywood set from armorer to actor with no intermediary, meaning... The armorer safely loads the weapon with the type of loads that it could be in this case. Obviously not in the case of a magazine or in the case of a revolver, you wouldn't have a magazine, you'd have a cylinder loaded. These are live rounds. These are nine millimeter live rounds. And I want to talk about this so everybody understands the difference between live ammunition and a blank. Make this very clear. We talked about some of this yesterday morning on Midnight's Edge where I had a guest appearance um, for this exact tragic story, this, this same reason. This is a cartridge, if I can get the camera to focus on it. This is a 9mm cartridge. Okay, it's not a bullet, it's a cartridge. You have a casing that is filled with powder that incinerates when the hammer from a pistol, in this case, or a revolver or a rifle, be what it may, strikes this primer at the back of the cartridge. That primer right there in the center, that little circle. That primer then ignites the powder inside the cartridge, which burns at a rapid rate. It does not explode. It burns and creates a rapid expansion of gas from that incineration inside that casing, which then ejects the bullet, which is this piece on the front, off the cartridge, down the barrel, out the muzzle, and towards the target. A blank works just like this. Difference, of course, is that there is no steel or lead bullet or depleted uranium in some crazy cases, but there is no projectile at the, at the front of this cartridge. The front is crimped. There is a wadding that is stuffed in there because in order for that incendiary process to happen, there has to be a seal where the gas can then still expand and create the bang effect that gives you the realistic appearance on set of a real round being fired from a pistol that will give you the recoil and the muzzle climb in the same action it would as if a real live round of ammunition, a live cartridge, would be in that gun. Okay? So, now we're all on the same page. <clears throat> I want to talk about this article because there's some information here that, that strikes me as being important. This is from the Hollywood Reporter from this morning. Guns, ammo, accountability. Hollywood munitions experts grapple with rust tragedy. Questions swirl about onset gun safety and who could be at fault after Alec Baldwin shoots prop gun. It's not a prop gun. A prop gun with live rounds. Right there within five words, this article has already contradicted itself and this is, this is, a, this is a pet peeve 
This tells me that, you know, it has been for years. The media has constantly been wrong about most everything they have ever said in any publication involving a gun. Um, they don't know about them. They don't know what they are. They don't know how they work. And frankly, they have shown little interest over the years in even remotely trying to educate themselves before publishing, frankly, silly headlines and bylines like this in national publications. Uh, prop gun with live rounds. Well, you cannot stick a round of any sort, live or otherwise, in a prop gun because a prop gun, again, is a piece of garbage. It's a piece of injection molded plastic or rubber that is a paperweight. This was a real gun. Please do better media out there. And again, and this is this is this is part of the reason why things like this, uh, you know, it creates an environment on a set where this can happen because we are treating these and calling these something other than what they are. They these are not toys. They're not fake. They are real firearms. And uh, you know, this is this has got to be. And this is not just Hollywood Reporter. This has been NBC. This has been Variety, Deadline. This is every publication I've seen keeps pulling up this prop gun. Which is complete misinformation. Abs I don't think it's deliberate. I just don't. I just think they just they don't understand. They don't get it. So moving on. <sighs> Killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins again. A wife and a mother who will never come home. Never come home again. And there's there's nothing that that can be done to bring them back. No amount of apologies or money or whatever else is going to change this fact. Um. And injuring the director, who my understanding is that he is recovering, as best I know at this point that I'm recording this video. We wish him well. I do want to say one thing. I know there's a lot of people out there that making some really, really terrible statements out there in, in social media. Um, I'm not a big fan of Mr. Baldwin. Uh, have not been for some time. He has a reputation of being a jerk, and he's kind of earned that himself, let's be honest. That being said, I feel for him right now. I pray for him right now. I cannot imagine what he is going through after being party to this tragedy and most likely through no direct fault of his own. Um, the facts are not all out. We're going to wait. We're going to find out what comes of this. Uh, and we'll know sooner than later. The truth will out, as the old expression goes. But for now... <clears throat> Let's talk about this because there's some things in here that bother me. Uh, firearm safety guidelines are clear and longstanding in Hollywood where guns have been employed on the big screen since the silent film era. Uh, you know, live ammunition is never to be used uh, nor brought into any studio stage or lot. Blanks can kill. Yes, that's true. Uh, treat all firearms as though they are loaded. Absolutely. Um, not going to go through the basic firearm safety stuff here, but, you know, the common sense should tell you what to do. You know, never point a weapon at something you don't intend to shoot. Never have your finger on the trigger until you intend to fire, which is why when you saw me earlier pick this weapon up, my finger was in the proper position along the rail, along the side of the gun, above and outside of the trigger guard, and definitely not on the trigger itself. Whether it is loaded or unloaded does not matter. Basic safety 101. <clears throat> One of the things I understand about Hollywood sets, like I said earlier, is that when firearms are involved, and I'm sure there have been cases in the past where live ammunition has been used on a set. I think it could be used perfectly safety, safely given the correct circumstance, given that all safety protocols are taken. For example, an actor needs to sit there and shoot at a building, shoot out a window. We have an old Western, right? You want to shoot, you shoot the gun into the saloon. Nobody's in the building. Nobody's behind that fake storefront or whatever. All we need to do is to, you know, make it look like we're going to shoot out that piece of glass or you're going to, you know, shoot the side of that barn or something like that. Well, the cheapest and most cost effective and easiest way to do it is in camera with a piece of live ammunition that costs a few pennies as opposed to having to load some elaborate squib system up to blow holes in a wall, which has its own set of dangers, to be quite honest, uh, or engage in some expensive post-production uh, CGI or something like that, which obviously you couldn't do uh, a couple of decades ago. Um, so live ammunition in that situation I could see being used. But of course, the armorer is is initially responsible for the care uh, of, of which weapons are used and uh, who gets them and, and things like that. Um, initially, again, initially, which is what I'm going to get to in a minute. But I want to go down here. A search warrant affidavit 
first reported by Santa Fe Reporter, provides an early sketch of what may have occurred Thursday at Bonanza Creek outside of Santa Fe. According to the document, the armorer had laid out three prop guns, real guns, not props, not prop guns, not fake guns, guns, firearms, on a rolling cart. And the assistant director handed one of them to Baldwin, announcing to him that it was a, quote, cold gun, meaning it was believed to contain no live ammunition. But according to the affidavit, the gun was loaded with live rounds. And when Baldwin pulled the trigger, Hutchins was struck and killed. Director Joel Souza, who was standing behind the cinematographer, was wounded. That right there screams as a problem to me. Let me explain. The armorer for the chain of custody in this case of this firearm for safety's sake, the armorer who is responsible for carrying, maintaining, and in this case, loading properly the weapon, should be handing this directly to the actor. Now, I can tell you as somebody who's been around guns all their life, whether I'm on a Hollywood set or not, which I've never been on, if somebody comes up to me and hands me a weapon like this, that is not my weapon, that I did not personally load, that I have not personally attended to, out of habit of firearm safety, the first thing I'm going to do before that director yells action, I'm going to inspect the loads. I want to know what I'm shooting. I want to know what is in there before I pull that trigger, whether I'm told it's empty or loaded with blanks or live rounds. I'm going to inspect the chamber. Is there a round in the chamber? Basic firearm safety. Know your weapon. So to me, if Hollywood wants to make any changes to these regulations, I think the operators, in this case the actors that are holding these weapons, should also bear some responsibility to make sure that what they've been given is correct. Now, in this case, the armorer, according to this affidavit that was filed, this this which is a piece of sworn testimony under law, that the assistant director, not the armorer, retrieved one of these three weapons from this cart. Now, we can speculate from there, and I do mean speculate, that obviously this assistant director, you know, grabbed one of these three weapons. Do we know if the assistant director actually knew which one was which? Don't know. Probably not. Don't know why the assistant director, who probably has no firearms experience at all, never, maybe never held a gun. I don't know why this person was handing Mr. Baldwin this gun. I don't know why Mr. Baldwin would have taken this weapon from this assistant director. It seems, to my knowledge, outside of the norms of what the safety protocols would be on a set like this, especially in Hollywood, given what's in the content of the rest of this article, which is very lengthy and too long to read in, in its entirety here. <sighs> Now, why was he pointing the, the, the gun towards a camera? Well, there's plenty of shots where you want to have a weapon. You know, you want the camera angle and the, and the firearm. You know, you, you want that type of shot. Again, there are safety procedures they have in Hollywood where nobody would be standing behind the camera when that would happen. Again, you would inspect and make sure that you have the correct cartridges loaded into the weapon to make sure that it was going to do what you wanted it to do or to maintain the safety protocols. Again, these weren't made. And we have seen several articles since this tragic incident has happened that have detailed that, well, frankly, safety protocols on set look like they were repeatedly, routinely not being followed. There were quote unquote misfires before this happened. Now I say quote unquote, because again, I don't trust what the media is reporting as a misfire. That is a term they are using. I don't know if that's actually a legitimate misfire or if they're just using that as no, somebody actually fired a gun off and a live round was ejected. It was a live cartridge inside that gun and they hit a building or something. I don't, that's not a misfire. That's that's not that is that that's not a misfire by definition. So I don't know what misfire means to them if that's what happened. We don't know. Um, so again, this is one of these things to where this is, you know, life is not perfect, but it, it really sounds like both before and after this union crew from IATSE was working on the set, 
And then they apparently left because the safety conditions were not being observed. Another crew came in. So I, I don't think it's fair to say that, well, this was a non-union incident. Well, if the union left because safety procedures weren't being followed in the first place, then the safety procedures was not a union or non-union issue. It was an issue of production management on this set. And this armorer, the director, the assistant director, the actors, they may have all done everything by the book. And it's possible that something tragic like this, a, a freak incident still could have happened. I'm not even entirely convinced by the use of the word live ammunition in this article, as I may have mentioned before, until an actual police report and a coroner's report comes out with, uh, you know, with the facts of what this poor woman, this wife and this mother who will never go home again, what she was actually struck with, uh, I'm going to reserve judgment. And we'll find out. We'll know soon enough. And then maybe we'll have another discussion on this. But again, look, uh, it's real stuff. This is, you know, safety issues out there, especially firearm safety needs to be taken seriously. And it's, um, you know, I don't know if any changes out there. I don't know if any changes out there in, in the procedures because they have, look, it's, it's been 30 years since we've had another similar incident. Uh, back on the set of The Crow, All right, 30 years since somebody has been injured with a firearm uh, issue on a set. So, and we, we've had plenty of movies that have involved firearms since then. <clears throat> so all the, all the safety protocols and regulations in the world, they don't do a thing. If the people that should be observing them choose not to. Any case, <clears throat> leave me your thoughts in a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, but again, let's be realistic. This is not a prop gun. These are real firearms. Need to be treated with respect and all the safety concerns involved. Like I said, I've been around guns all my life. Um, I, I've, I've had a concealed handgun permit for over 20 years. Uh, and when I see stories like this, I shake my head and go, yeah, usually 99 you know, 99 times out of 100, 99.9999999 times out of 100. These issues should not happen. It's not a gun problem. It's, it's, it's not a safety regulation problem. It's the problem of the people involved in incidents like this that do not take the safety precautions that they should be is when this happens. And even if they did, somewhere along the line, a mistake was made and a tragic one but this poor woman isn't coming back, no matter what we say or do. Prayers to her family and uh, also to Mr. Baldwin, as I'm sure he has replayed this terrible moment in his mind over and over again for the last several days. Um, yeah. In any case, till next time, take care.